with me is my co-chair Mr. Sanjay Thakkar. He is the director of refineries and petrochemicals from uh, Emerson Automation Solutions. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, okay. operational excellence yeah, is fine. all about uh, improving operations, optimizing operations, maximizing margins. And today we will have a wide array of topics to be covered. In fact, topics from refinery, then we will have a presentation from OISD and we will also have a presentation from R&D. So, uh, we will have uh, the presentations would be started by Devadatta Day from HPC, followed by Mr. Sanjay Singh from OISD and Mr. Iswarao Dhoni from HPCL. Uh, as the speakers would know that the time allotted is uh, 14 minutes each. But since one of the speakers couldn't make it, so even if it exceeds a bit, a minute or two here and there, that's fine. And at the end of the session, at the end of the fourth presentation, we'll be taking some questions, right? Depending on the time that is available at our disposal. So, I'll first of all invite uh, Devadatta Day to kindly come. She'll be making a presentation on improving the efficiency at the refineries. In fact, her uh, topic is enhancing refinery profitability by optimizing crude distillation unit strategies for maximizing margins. Over to you, Devadatta. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, my name is Devadatta De. I'll be presenting uh, today on behalf of HPCL. The topic of my presentation is enhancing refining profitability, CDU optimization, strategies for maximizing margins. So we'll briefly look at the business portfolio of HPCL. HPCL owns and operates refineries in Mumbai and Vishakhapatnam with a capacity of 9.5 and 8.3 mmTPA respectively. HPCL owns India's largest lube refinery in Mumbai producing oil, lube oil based stocks with a capacity of 428 mmTPA. HPCL holds an equity stake of 48.99% in HMEL Bhatinda, which operates at a capacity of 11.3 and MRPL uh, 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 the stake is 16.96% and the capacity is 15 mmTPA. Also a new MMTP, 9 mmTPA greenfield refinery come petrochemical complex is being set up in uh, Rajasthan uh, which is also a JV where HPCL holds 74% stake. Uh, uh, here also the HPCL marketing infrastructure is shown in brief. Uh, it has retail outlets, LPG distributorships, lube blending plants, exclusive lube dealerships, distributorship, uh, LPG bottling plants, and so on. Uh, now moving ahead, uh, we'll briefly look at the Mumbai refinery configuration. It has uh, basically two CDUs and VDUs, one for processing loop bearing crudes and the other for processing low sulfur crudes. The bottom of CDU, named as RCO, is fed to the vacuum distillation unit. Over at naphtha, from CDU is fed to the naphtha stabilizer, where LPG is separated, and straight run naphtha is uh, sent as feedstock to the MS block. Straight run diesel from the CDU columns is the feed to DHDT block, which produces our final HST. Uh, the uh, VDUs, uh, the side streams from our VDUs, as so we co uh, call that in uh, HPCL, the vacuum gas oils are feed stock to FCCs 1 and 2 and when uh, the crude is lube bearing the same is fed to the lube refinery for production of lube oil based stocks. That is the brief uh, how uh, the Mumbai refinery configuration is. So now we will move to MRCDU1 uh, where we are going to see uh, the optimizations we have done for uh, enhancing our refining margins. So MRCDU1 revamp was carried out in the year 2021, where capacity enhancement was done from 4.2 to 6 mmTPA. The design crudes uh, are Arab Light crude, API 33.5, and Kuwait crude, API 30.5. 
Uh, now looking at the major upgradations that were done in MRCDU1 revamp R, number one was addition of a pre-flash column for reducing the load on the crude furnaces and also the CDU column. Second is the addition of a new uh, CDU column. This was done uh, keeping in mind uh, the age of our old CDU column for improving reliability of operations. Second, uh, uh, third is the single vacuum distillation column. Previously, before uh, CDU1 revamp, we had two VDU columns. So that was replaced with a single VDU column and the heat integration was done with the present CDU column. And finally, uh, the naphtha stabilizer unit all, was also heat integrated with the CDU column, which was not the case in the previous uh, setup. Now we'll look at the brief uh, uh, process flow diagram of uh, CDU1. So crude from the tanks is pumped to the desalter via the preheat trains. In desalter, crude oil is uh, mixed with wash water for removing the salts and contaminants. The desalted crude moves ahead in the preheat train to the pre-flash column. Here, uh, the pressure is reduced for vaporization of the lighter ends and the bottom flashed crude moves ahead via preheat train number three to the crude furnace. Uh, our crude furnace is a balanced draft furnace uh, with both fuel gas and fuel oil firing. Uh, this flash crude is then fed to the CDU column. From the CDU column overhead, we get gases and naphtha. So this naphtha, along with the pre-flash column naphtha, is fed to the naphtha stabilizer unit, where this unstabilized naphtha is split into LPG and stabilized straight run naphtha. Uh, LPG is sent to the LPG treating units and uh, later to product rundown and the bottom uh, straight run naphtha along with FBS is feed to the MS block for producing uh, our final MS rundown. Uh, next uh, from CT number three is our aviation turbine fuel which is uh, then fed to a Merox treating unit and finally it is uh, the jet uh, fuel from our refinery and finally the LVGO light virgin gas oil which is the feedstock for our DHDS that is a diesel hydro treating and diesel isothermic units for producing final HSD. The bottom of CDU column, that is the reduced crude oil, is fed to the VDU furnace and then to the vacuum distillation column. We have ejectors in the vacuum distillation column for maintaining the vacuum in the tower. The overhead of vacuum distillation column, we have VGO and off gas. Off gas is utilized in the furnace as fuel gas. Uh, VGO, excess VGO are also diesel cuts and also sent to uh, DHTT for producing uh, HSD. First SS and second SS, uh, these are the vacuum gas oils which are sent to the lube refinery for producing lube oil base stocks depending on the type of crude. Finally, the vacuum tower bottom is uh, sent to the PDA unit for making of uh, bitumen which is under the lube refinery. So now uh, we, uh, we saw the uh, CDU1 configuration. So basically the CDU1 uh, is designed for two types of API, that is 33.5 Arab light crude and Kuwait crude, that is 30 API. But, the economic, uh, but looking into the economic considerations, we had to produce a lot other type of crudes like Das, Murban, Basra light, Basra medium, etc. which uh, the, where the API ranges from 29 to 40. So while producing these crudes in CDU1, we faced uh, some challenges. So uh, now forward, looking forward, we will see what were the challenges, what optimization strategies were used by us to beat those challenges and uh, to enhance refining profitability. So the challenges, uh, first was the crude throughput maximization at medium sulfur crude. So basically we were not able to uh, maximize crude throughput when the API was more than 35. Uh, the second was distillate yield maximization. Third was energy savings. And finally, 
to avoid product quality giveaway that is we needed consistency in product quality so the objectives uh, that were identified that we needed to address are as follows uh, first was to reduce the flooding in cdu uh, overhead section uh, as we produce uh, when we produce medium sulfur crudes being the api being higher the lighter components are higher in those crudes so uh, there is certain flooding in the cdu column overhead section when there is flooding it the separation the liquid vapor separation uh, is not good resulting in certain specks uh, give away uh, that is why it is very important that flooding is not there in cdu uh, column second is to resume uh, resolve furnace heat due to limitation uh, while uh, processing heavy api crudes like uh, basra medium uh, higher furnace duty duty was required uh, given the crudes are heavier so the, we were uh, facing limitations in the bridge wall temperatures and tube skin temperatures of our furnace third was the consistency of consistency in product specifications we will look at this in detail so uh, the operating conditions of the unit pre and post revamp were analyzed the specifications of the unit rundown products and the refinery dispatch products were also very closely studied and also downstream units were uh, uh, kept in discussion about the margin available in their feedstock so based on this uh, discussions we uh, fi finalized there were three areas where we needed to mainly optimize so that this uh, challenges could be overcome so we'll look at uh, the three areas one by one now first is the pre flash tower optimization so the number one constraint that we were facing was cdu throughput limitation due to flooding in cdu column and second was high furnace bridge wall temperatures and tube skin temperatures so uh, after analysis it was observed that if we increase the naphtha yield from pre flush column both of these issues can be addressed and we will see how so the actions uh, that were taken uh, were number one the pft inlet temperature was increased by 12 degrees celsius by making certain changes in the crude preheat trains secondly the pft overhead pressure was reduced from 3 to 2.2 kg third the pft overhead temperature was increased from 102 to 115 degrees celsius all these changes resulted in the yield increase of pft naphtha from 5.5 to 7.5% that is by 2% and as the naphtha yield from pft was increased the quantity of flash crude moving forward got reduced resulting in uh, reduction in heat duty of furnaces also the coil inlet temperatures increased because we got a better heat duty uh, with less flow and throughput maximization could be achieved as the vapor load in cdu column got reduced so the crude feed could be increased by 80 meter cube per hour during ms crude processing uh, so these are the graphs we have uh, the first graph is pft inlet temperature and pft naphtha yield as we increase the pft inlet temperature directly pft naphtha yield increased and the second graph is the cit versus the pft naphtha yield as pft naphtha yield increased the flashed crude uh, got reduced increasing the cit directly so uh, we got uh, a very significant reduction in heat duty, heat duty of crude furnaces the savings was approximately 2200 srfts uh, per annum uh, now we'll look at the cdu1 column optimization so the con constraints that were addressed in the cdu column are the first one was hst quality giveaway second one was the high uh, straight run naphtha production and third was high steam consumption in uh, vacuum column so the objective uh, that was uh, found was to maximize elvigio yield by increasing its fbp so the action that were taken uh, are as follows a uh, crude furnace ut was increased from 358 to 368 degrees celsius the overhead pressure was reduced from 1.75 to 1.4 kg per centimeter square 
LVGO endpoint was increased to 380 degrees Celsius and the LVGO reflux stream whose design, as per design, it should be 150, but then we optimized it to 100 meter cube per hour. While reducing the LVGO reflux, we uh, closely, very closely monitored LVGO color so that uh, the color remains intact as it is a feed to our uh, diesel isothermic and diesel hydro treating units. So uh, after these actions, what we got uh, was LVGO yield got increased by 4%. Uh, since uh, the LVGO yield got increased, there was less uh, diesel slippage in RCO, resulting in a reduced uh, load of the video column. So uh, we could save 10 tons per hour of ejector steam and stripping steam as well. Uh, also, a uh, NAFTA yield uh, was optimized for uh, throughput maximization. So here are uh, the two graphs uh, showing that uh, uh, when LVGO yield increased, uh, the COT, uh, after increasing the COT, the RCO yield reduced. Uh, this resulted in uh, a lower uh, vacuum column load. Uh, now we'll look at the uh, HST uh, QGA issue. Actually, the uh, basic quality requirement of HST is the flash should be minimum 35 degrees Celsius and recovery at 360 degrees Celsius should be 95%. So the earlier case, when we were maintaining LVGO FBP as 360 degrees, the final uh, quality that we were getting was the flash was 57 and the FBP was 320 degrees Celsius. So there was a lot of margin uh, present in HST. So what we did was we increased LVGO distillate yield and uh, in that process the FVP was also increased from 360 to 380 to 385 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the NAFTA, SRN that was additionally produced rather than exporting the NAFTA, we back blended it to uh, HSD and uh, then we got uh, the flash was 37 and FVP was 357 degrees Celsius. During uh, this process, LVGO color was very closely monitored as uh, we were increasing the FVP beyond 360 degrees. Uh, now we'll see a uh, video column optimization. The constraints that were uh, addressed here were uh, first was a higher VTB pen resulting in uh, fuel oil production and the high steam consumption in VDU. Uh, mostly uh, the ejector steam and stripping steam contributed to the higher steam consumption. The analysis, after the analysis, the objectives were very clear. Uh, consistency was required in side stream specs. Second was we had to reduce the VDU load, video overall, overall column load. Third was uh, VTB pen, we needed VTB pen below 150 mm so that bitumen could be produced from that VTB. So the actions Yuvadatta, that were taken. Yuvadatta, you need to complete in another two minutes. Yeah, yeah. So the actions that were taken as the diesel slippage in RCO was already minimized. Then uh, the furnace COT was increased to 415 to 420. Um, from 405, depending on the crude API. Third, the wash oil flow is optimized and ejector steam and stripping steam consumption is also optimized. So the results, what we got are uh, shown here. The VTB pen, we achieved VTB pen less than 150 mm in MS crude processing and VG10 bitumen could be produced from MS crude. Uh, uh, it is also improved second SS yield. We were not able to get consistent second SS production while producing higher API crudes and uh, fuel oil generation was also reduced. Throughput maximization was achieved as uh, this, uh, the higher COT in uh, video furnaces contributed to the CIT of CDU as we have a heat integrated system in CDU and VDU. And finally, the energy savings, the reduction in total steam consumption by six tons per, six tons per hour from the video column. So finally, summarizing, uh, we maximize crude throughput by addressing the limitation of CDU main uh, uh, hydraulic limitation, the high PDI issue. We increase the crude throughput by 80 meter cube per hour in MS crude processing. CDU furnace high bridge wall temperature and TSTs limitation was uh, also uh, addressed uh, by increasing the CIT and NAFTA from PFT. 
uh, reduction in furnace heat duty, the savings were 2200 SRFT per year, steam consumption totally was reduced by 10 tons per hour. And finally, the distillate yields were maximized by 4% and the production of VG10 bitumen from PDA was achieved during MS crude processing. In overall, this uh, profitability, we uh, saved 580 crores as per the data. And uh, that's it. I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Devadatta. Uh, may I now invite Mr. Sanjay Singh, uh, Joint Director, Oil Industry Safety Directorate with his presentation on lean management as an operational excellence methodology. Mr. Sanjay Singh. Respected uh, chairperson, speakers and uh, delegates who are present here. I am Sanjay from OISD, originally from uh, Bharat Petroleum. So uh, recently deputed to uh, oil, in, oil industry. So basically uh, OISD is a technical wings of uh, Petroleum Ministry, Ministry of Petroleum. And uh, we do the uh, safety audits uh, to this refinery, petrochemicals, and all the oil and gas installation, including upstream and uh, downstream both. Apart from the audit, uh, we made uh, standards for the uh, oil and gas sectors, in incident investigations, and then training and seminar is also part of our uh, portfolio. So basically, uh, I am here to, uh, uh, to give a presentation on uh, how to improve the operation excellence by using this lean management technology. Although I am a uh, part of the safety, so but uh, the operation excellence is that basically uh, once the operation excellence has been increased, definitely it will improve the uh, safety performance also. So uh, starting from the, the, as we are now knowing that uh, the, the world, the oil and gas industry sectors are facing challenges, not only to produce the product at the lowest cost, but with the less emission. And after this uh, post-19, uh, the oil and, oil and gas industry's uh, demand not only will recover, but it also increases. And same time, the uh, cost is increasing, uh, increasing on uh, the multiple fronts. So it's a challenge to oil and gas industries to provide the, uh, this provide the product at the lowest cost at, with the less uh, emission. So basically, operation excellence is uh, the uh, way it provides the roadmap to uh, create a uh, Basically, it's uh, provide a uh, roadmap to organization towards the continuous improvement so that we can reduce the uh, operating cost by eliminating some wasteful uh, steps, process, techniques. And finally, it will uh, improve the cost of that. Uh, not only the, it will reduce the cost as well as the improve the performance of the organization. So uh, the broader def definition of this operation excellence is the executing a uh, business st study more efficiently and more uh, consistently than your uh, against your comp uh, competitor. And definitely in turn, it should uh, increase the uh, operating performance, less operational risk, as well as the improve the safety, uh, inform this, uh, safety performance of the organization. It's an approach to business management that emphasizes uh, continuous improvement across all aspects of the business and within the business also. This operation excellence start with the uh, cultural shift where the, all the employees, including from the top to uh, bottom, they have to uh, work towards the, uh, not only on the uh, good quality products, but also on the perspective of the uh, customers. So uh, how this uh, OPEX uh, means operation excellence uh, can help uh, to uh, minimize the, so to, to improve the business performance. So basically uh, this improving his business is not uh, just increasing a uh, ROI or uh, increasing a efficiency. Basically in uh, today's uh, economy, in today's scenario, the organization has to more flexible towards the market, towards the technologies. They have to easily adopt the uh, changes that is uh, going to that in, in the, in the uh, markets. So basically, uh, there are five uh, key uh, necessities that that has to be uh, important for the oil and gas uh, sectors. One definitely, the first come is uh, the safety and compliance. Another is uh, operation uh, efficiency, cost, and now the uh, decarbonization is the other uh, concern for the uh, industries and the uh, asset uh, integrity. These uh, things uh, are very important for the oil and gas sectors. 
so uh, by using this uh, operation excellence by uh, we can uh, achieve all these things like uh, better quality services performance delivery time also yeah so basically uh, there are many ways to achieve this operation excellence but there are few uh, which has been adopted and uh, accepted by across the globe the lean management uh, manufacturing man management is uh, one of them so basically lean management uh, is the method to uh, minimize the waste while the uh, six sigma it focus on the continuous improvement basically six sigma works on a principle this uh, we called it uh, dmaic where the d stand for define measure analysis improvement and control kaizen and uh, total quality management are the two uh, another uh, methodology that uh, we are using across the globe but lean management system is slightly different from this uh, all these uh, methodology so basically uh, this lean management system is not a new concept in uh, 1990s uh, similar to other uh, concept this uh, japanese company toyota uh, has emerged this uh, concept basically that time they were facing this uh, resources scarcity and the production efficiency so uh, they reformed their uh, manufacturing uh, practices by uh, prioritizing value by eliminating the steps where the non value added this uh, the steps where the the steps they are uh, not not only the uh, taking a time but there are no uh, value addition and now that this uh, lean uh, management systems has expanded beyond uh, the manufacturing uh, routes it is uh, helping all the uh, man, all the industries uh, uh, focusing on identifying and uh, eliminating non value added uh, uh, activities process cost and definitely the optimization of uh, resource uh, utilization so basically uh, there are five principles that has been encountered to uh, make a recipe of this uh, lean management uh, principles all these are value value streams so uh, one by one i will uh, go in details so basically value so before understanding uh, the definition of value uh, first we have to understand what the value is basically value uh, the value is the uh, is what the customer is want to pay the customer is uh, don't want to pay for the defects your uh, on spec products they don't bother uh, how much off spec product you are uh, generating in day to day operation they need only the uh, off spec product at the uh, cost that uh, that is competitive so basically uh, uh, and the problem is that sometime a customer don't want uh, don't understand they don't know uh, what they want so uh, there are many techniques many uh, methodologies are available like uh, market survey then uh, interviews then uh, data analysis which can help organization to uh, get the information what the customer want and how they want to deliver it and the cost they can uh, bear it next is uh, value stream so uh, once we uh, get this uh, value value means end goal once the uh, end goal has been uh, fixed the next step is to uh, map the uh, value stream map mapping of value stream means uh, from the beginning the first step to the last steps in this steps you have to uh, identify the steps that not only uh, taking a time increasing the cost but same time they are not adding any uh, value so basically the it is a method to identify uh, the such uh, steps such uh, processes and then final uh, finding the ways to eliminate this once the this uh, un unwanted un uh, value added uh, steps has been uh, identified then the uh, then organization has to ensure that ki there, there will be uh, flow will be the seamless no interruption no uh, bottlenecks so uh, because uh, once this uh, flow is uh, flawless and the product is available whenever the customer is want then definitely customer can uh, pull this product uh, whenever they want it this will definitely reduce the inventory cost of the organization it will improve the uh, uh, performance of the organization and the last one although the all four steps are uh, very important but this last one this continuous improvement is perhaps uh, most important because it should be a part of your uh, organization culture
so basically uh, i am a uh, from the refinery background so uh, how to implement this uh, lean management in uh, oil and gas industries there are many ways to implement some i have uh, tried to list it out like uh, 5s methodology uh, use of ai is use of uh, latest uh, technologies renewable energy maximize renewable energies environmental uh, consciousness so in this way uh, we can reduce the uh, eliminate the waste uh, steps from our uh, day to day operations so few example uh, i have tried to compile from the uh, my own uh, personal this industrial experience one is the modular uh, construction basically uh, modulation this modular construction is alternative uh, method to construct the any facilities any uh, systems where this model uh, are con constructed outside the uh, uh, site area maybe in the in the uh, contractor yard or in controlled uh, manufacturing facilities and finally it is delivered to the site where it it can assembled it can uh, with, a, with with a minimal uh, field jobs so basically uh, this will improve uh, time this will save the time as well as this improve the uh, safety performance also because all all we are uh, technical this uh, experts technical experts we know all the major accidents happen during the construction phase artificial intelligence basically uh, use of artificial intelligence uh, in oil and gas uh, opens the many uh, diverse application like uh, use of the uh, latest uh, software this uh, digital thing Uh, digital thing is uh, the replica of the actual uh, on site uh, assets this is basically a revolutionary uh, where you can uh, and this uh, very uh, you can uh, fix the uh, maintenance practices as, as well as your asset uh, integrity uh, by using this uh, digital thing uh, methods ai this decision making this decision uh, analysis is itself is a very time consuming and very uh, uh, cost consuming activities but there are many applications are available which can give a uh, better insight with the uh, very good prediction also a smart inventory procurement the uh, cloud network smart track and uh, trace uh, technologies then uh, machine learning that will help to uh, improve the inventory management of the organization and finally all these uh, artificial applications will improve the performance of the organizations this is very common uh, problem for all the uh, industries uh, alarm rationalization basically uh, alarm alarm is the it's a nuisance activity uh, sometime unwanted uh, alarm is a nuisance that can distract the panel officers and because of this alarm uh, alarm uh, it may be possible operator or uh, technician this uh, dcs operator may miss the actual alarm and uh, that can lead to a uh, not only the process ups upset that can uh, has a potential to uh, disturb the safety performance of the organization also this uh, drone now the uh, drone uh, technology is uh, very common and uh, there are very uh, good sensors and uh, technologies are available where uh, you can use this technologies to uh, this uh, inspection to do the inspection of the cross country pipelines mm -hmm. tall towers like a uh, flare where the human uh, is uh, uh, that uh, that will be very risky for the human uh. so uh, these are the uh, few examples that i've uh, tried to compile from the uh, our, our own uh, our my own experience one more uh, this uh, conventional uh, oxidation process in this convection waste water treatment uh, wt this waste water treatment uh, unit this conventional uh, oxidation process generate uh, not only the by product hazardous by product is also generated the lot of sludges that also is an, uh, another concern for the refinery units so basically advanced oxidation process uh, is it decomposes all the uh, hazardous uh, products into a non hazardous and without generating any uh, sludges same time the uh, because the re reaction rate is uh, high so retention time is less it can design from the uh, very low flow to very high flow so uh, area area uh, also you can optimize the area so uh, but there are uh, few challenges also although uh, it's a very good, good techniques but there are few challenges 
just the knowledge of uh, latest technology that is not available uh, that is uh, so resources yes uh, top management supports so these are the few challenges that has to be overcome by your organization so uh, in uh, last i can say the ultimate goal of this uh, lean management system is to uh, reduce the waste as well as the improve the performance but this lean management system uh, any organization cannot uh, adopt this methodology in uh, overnight but if the organization uh, is uh, overcome all these challenges definitely uh, this methodology will improve the overall performance of the company thank you thank you mr sanjay now i invite dr iswar rao doni manager r and d hpcl mumbai uh, with his presentation on improving the efficiency at uh, refineries by using some unique anti fouling solutions over to you mr doni thank you chair thank you chair and thank you iew for giving me this opportunity to present in this meeting uh, today i'm going to take uh, talk about hp thermopro this is one of our uh, flagship product developed within our r and d center at bangalore and it's a anti fouling solution for refinery preheat applications yeah contents for the today's talk are i will start with the business case then quickly explain you about the development process and then take you to the commercial demonstration at our refineries and i will also show you quick case studies and benefits and finally i will conclude yeah this is a problem fouling fouling is nothing but a it's a deposition of unwanted materials on any surface and the surface where we are talking about preheat exchangers this is not a new problem it's been there for a decades and refiners has been facing this problem so what are the implications of this fouling fouling can reduce the preheat temperatures which will require you to burn higher fuel oils to maintain the temperatures this not only adds to the operational cost to the refiners but also increases the ghg emissions and one more important point is all these fouling components are corrosive in nature so that can affect the integrity of the units as the problem is known there might be strategies also known so the few strategies are mentioned here first one is heat exchanger design improvement which will require some capex and another thing is planned crude processing cycles where refiners do like low falling crudes followed by high falling crudes and then low falling crudes and the third option is regular offline cleaning sometimes you need to take shutdown of that particular preheat exchanger and the fourth option is use of some online chemicals so today i am i'm here to talk about these online chemical treatment processes as i mentioned earlier there are multiple options or solutions available in the market but one problem with these things are these are crude specific or sometimes unit specific that means the same anti fouling cannot be used for a cdus or short residue or dhds units so here we came up with a solution which is a novel in nature unique to the nature and the development process is shown here to understand the problem we collected a fouling samples from ref different refinery units and we analyzed them and understand the mechanisms of forming them with that understanding we developed some novel formulation within our within our r&d center and as i mentioned it's a formulation will contain different components so the compatibility of these various components is very much important so we carried out initial screening of these formulations and then we went for the evaluation of these uh, using a refinery fouling simulator ultimately we end up with the one final product which we scaled up to multi ton level and then demonstrated in our refineries so as i mentioned there are no ready made in house uh, protocols are available for evaluating these formulations so we spend lot of time in developing in house protocols which are really producing the reproducing the results and we also synthesized more than 100 formulations because you will understand why this is this much number is required and we also tested on more than 30 unique crudes crude blends and short residues as i mentioned earlier we want to give a unique solution which that means it should work for all kinds of crudes and all kinds of units so that's how we have to prepare number of formulations to test them and understand the performance so this is the thermopro as i mentioned during the during the characterization of these scale samples 
we understand some dispersant kind of chemical is required which will mitigate the coagulation of these asphaltin molecules and it will also lower the affinity of these fallen samples sitting on or uh, settling on the surfaces and if you see the falling scales most of the times we will end up with uh, some polymeric products they may come from some radical reactions so you should have one radical quencher within your formulation which can do this uh, radical quenching and stop the polymerization as i already mentioned all these corrosion products all these falling products are corrosive in nature so there should be a corrosion inhibitor and one of the understanding during the analysis what we found around 5 to 7 percentage of coke is formed within these uh, fallings so we thought this coke can be arise from the dehydrogenation reactions of asphaltene or higher molecules so we want to add some metal deactivator which can trap these metals and can do this stop this dehydrogenation process so our our product is a unique combination of these four different chemicals working in synergy and giving the final result and our formulation is a, should be superior in performance and it should be cost effective and moreover it should be a single formulation should work for a wide range of crudes feeds units i quickly shown here the evolution process you can see the fresh tube at the bottom and the fall tube on the top so what happened during the experiment as the preheat is dropping this is result of the some falling forming on the tubes so what do we do it during this experiment we check the temperature outlet at the time t0 and at the experiment end of the experiment and the delta t is a well representative of the falling nature of the particular experiment if higher the delta t more the falling and not only that we also weigh the deposits formed on this tube and we also check the particle size particle size distribution and which will also give us some indication about the performance of the anti fallen formulations and this table shows you the uh, lab scale results for example if you say if you take crude a without anti fallen the temperature drop is 35.6 with a reference material in market it is 10.1 with dermopro it was 5.2 so it is clearly indicating dermopro has shown at least double the performance and you can see the same trend down the line crude b and c and the blend a and b and the same formulation also work against dhds feed and you can see like reference giving 2.1 drop and dermopro is giving only 1 degree drop and the same formulation also worked very well for a short residue as you can see in the table so these indicate that our dermopro is a is a very novel product and showing a superior performance on all types of crudes and one of the criteria what we mentioned earlier the particle size you can see these are the same analysis of the fallen scales what we collected from the heat exchanger tube in our experiment and you can see without anti fallen the particle size is average around 4.5 micrometer and with commercial anti fallen it was 3.8 micrometer with dermopro it was 0.38 micrometer there is almost 85% reduction in the particle size what it means the dermopro not only assisting in improving the preheat temperature but also altering the formation of the scales on the surface with this the cleaning of these preheat exchangers when it is taken out for the offline cleaning will be easier and can also save some time after successful lab uh, demonstration with the help of our refineries we went for the commercial demonstration for that we uh, scaled up this product to 90 metric ton and we conducted the trials both in our vaisag refinery as well as mumbai refinery and if you see the trial period it was done over a long period like more than a year this is because the crude processing cycle in a refinery is very dynamic and we want to expose our chemical to the varying conditions of the crude and process parameters to evaluate the sustainable performance and as i mentioned we tested on high sulfur low sulfur waxy and asphaltenic crudes and the dosing circuits on crude side rco side and short residue side and this is the result from our vaisag refinery where mostly asphaltenic crudes are processed and you can see the trial commencement line on the vertical side if you see on the left side of this during the commercial uh, anti fallen uses preheat temperature was continuously dropping when they switched to hp dermopro the preheat temperature sustained and it is also improved over the time if you see it is the case with the both low sulfur as well as the high sulfur cases 
and the second picture come uh, these are the results from our mumbai refinery the blue one shows the without antifoliant case where the temperature is continuously dropping and the green one showing the uh, dermopro condition it was improved from 240 to 263 temperature this sometimes can happen as it is having a dispersant chemical sometimes it cleans away the foliage formed on the preheat exchangers so that's how the preheat temperature can be improved and it is maintained for almost 18 months in the same line then we slightly tweaked the product as mostly waxic roots are processed in our refinery we slightly tweak and you can see the result is the shown in the orange uh, orange lines where the preheat temperature is sustained and i want to make uh, bring to these highlighted lines you can see in the an no antifoliant case in 10 months there were 16 uh, preheat exchanger cleanings were done with dermopro it was 14 in 18 months you can see the cleaning is dropped by off when hp dermopro w was uh, used there was no cleanings in the 6 months time so it clearly indicating that our dermopro can enhance this uh, efficiency of this preheat temp temperatures and can reduce the offline cleaning of the heat exchangers and i want to quickly show you two case studies thanks to our refineries who had made this very clinical critical uh, body critical observations so first one coming from our mumbai refinery as it is a well known fact when there is a tube velocity is low or the throughputs are low falling is higher during the corona as we all know like most of the refineries has to cut down their throughputs during the two months period there was a 12 degrees drop in the cit and the similar situation arisen as already the above the mentioned they, during the expansion process but we noticed only 2 degrees drop so this might be attributed can be attributed to dermopro performance so the even at low tube velocities dermopro performance is sustained and the second case study coming from vizag refinery if you know this mars blend crude this is high asphalt high asphalt crude or high sulfur crude and it is already it generally observed that at the end of this processing cycle 6 degrees drop is observed but when they were used with the dermopro there was 0 degree drop is observed so again it is indicating that dermopro is is showing the sustainable performance different against different crude so coming to the benefits as i already mentioned uh, dermopro can bring you the energy savings that can lead to reduced carbon footprint lesser preheat exchanger cleaning improved operational safety and extended unit life and in numbers it can also bring lot of savings to the company as the chemical dose at a lower doses and it is a cost effective importantly the indirect savings are multifold close to 7 to 8 times which is coming from the saved fuel oil burning and another important aspect is the environmental impact if you see in a cdu of 3.4 mm tpa there are almost 12 percent as reduction in these uh, ghg emissions but if you calculate back to the entire refinery it was a 0.3 percent as reduction in the ghg emissions and this product has been awarded product innovator of the year from fiki 2021 we already received patents from india singapore japan europe canada saudi arabia and in the last week we also received from usa so in conclusion I can say HP Dermopro is a novel antifoliant formulation for preheat exchangers. It is a single formulation for mitigating the falling issues in with respect of the crude or unit. And the field trials were successfully uh, completed at our uh, both the refineries and the product is in continuous usage thereafter. It exhibited a superior performance and a very cost effective and importantly it is showing 0.3% GHG uh, emission reduction. overall compared to the refinery with that i thank you all for your patient listening as i mentioned i came from hpcl green r&d center which is uh, located in bengaluru and we are always working at a building a cleaner and greener tomorrow for all our country and for the world and we been developed number of products and technologies and we are happy to invite you for the same thank you thank you mr doni thank thank you thank you i think it was wonderful to see that how uh, the anti fouling things are really going to help us and in the preheat train i think in the refinery preheat train is something and and refinery by operation i think we are energy guzzlers 
so really optimizing the preheat train is something which is really important and best if i have to see really that at the end, it is proven that at the end of the trial uh, there were proven results that there is in the six months there is nothing no fouling was observed in it i think there was no loss of temperature in the start of run and end of run so i think that is something which is very significant to sum up all i think i would say that uh, thank you very much uh, the first presentation the best part i liked is that it was a quantified uh, there is a savings that when we are really optimizing the crude operations what kind of savings we are talking about and it was good to see that it was quantified as 550 crores this is the something saving which we have been able to do it and of course the if, if you are really doing the doing the same processing with better quality outputs maybe in the in terms of uh, increase in the yield of LG, LVGO and reduction in RCO, I think those kind of things are really uh, great. Second, Mr. Sanjay has presented us with the, how the, uh, he has changed the definition of OPEX. I will say that operational excellence really leads to reduction in OPEX. That means uh, operation expenses, I will say. So if you really see how, how, how lean management and clean management can really bring down our and he has really shared all the techniques which can be deployed to achieve those kind of lean management kind of things. Overall, I think we are thankful to, to the team who has really done this wonderful presentations in terms of how the efficiencies can be improved in, in a refining process. And I think Mr. Sanjay Singh has talked about overall, I think it can be deployed to any process units or any business process, I will say. With that, thank you very much. Thank you.